guys, Richard Holder here. The question for today, can you really put an L98 tuned port intake on an LT1? Well, I guess the answer is yes. But the question is, does it work? In this video, we're gonna compare a long runner tuned port intake manifold to the short runner LT1 intake manifold on our iron-headed L99 4.3 liter V8. But Richard, I've got a question for you. How do you put an L98 intake on the LT1 heads? They're different. Yes, they are. But thanks to the guys over at TPIS, Jim Hall, he modified the lower intake manifold, welded it, and milled it to accept the new bolt pattern. We bolted the TPI intake manifold on our 4.3 liter L99. Let's see what happens. short runner LT1 tank off of our L99, let's install the tune port. Started, let's take a look at our L99 4.3 liter V8 equipped with the LT1 intake manifold, the factory intake manifold that came with this motor. When we ran this, we also ran this with a distributor. I drilled a hole in the, in the back side of it so I could install a distributor just so that it made it easier for us rather than having to reconfigure um, an EFI system to, to work with this. So we were able to use the distributor as our trigger and then run it with the Holly, made things kind of simple. So we ran this with a small TPIS cam, actually it's the bigger of the two that they had originally sent. This particular cam was a 410-427 lift split, a 207-214 degree duration split, and a 117 degree lobe separation angle. Now if you haven't taken a look at the, um, the previous test, take a look at the playlist on this other guy's stuff that has the 4.3 liter L99 videos on it. Check it out and you can see what happened. When we put this cam in, we gained a little bit of peak power compared to the smaller cam that we ran, but it basically lost power through most of the curve. So this is not an ideal cam that's in this combination. We're going to try some new ones here coming up in the next couple of videos. But this is not an ideal cam, but we also equipped it with a set of 1.6 roller rockers, which definitely helped in power. And again, you can, you can check out the other video. There's a video where I show you what happened when we added the rockers, but it picked up power. But it had that cam, it had roller rockers, it had the stock iron heads, everything else was stock on it. It had the stock injectors, the stock throttle body. It did have long tube headers in it. They were on inch and three quarter, the dyno headers that we always run on these small block motors. And we ran it with 30 degrees of total timing. We ran it, we varied it from 25 all the way up through 32 and just didn't really see any gain. So 30 seemed to be kind of the sweet spot, both for carbureted and EFI combinations. We obviously dialed, dialed in the air fuel. These were 24 pound injectors. We think they were the original ones that came with the LT version. So run in this trim, with the LT1 intake manifold. Our little 4.3 liter produced 268 horsepower, and you can see a fairly flat torque curve peaking at 252, actually 251.8 foot-pounds of torque. But here's the interesting thing. Here's what happened when we installed the tune port manifold, which is the L98, or, or obviously they also ran it on the five liter version. I think that was the LB9. So we ran a complete tune port setup that the guys from TPIS did for us. They modified the uh, lower manifold, the base, 
to allow us to run because they had different bolt patterns to bolt that thing on. That, that particular intake was used on the conventional small block Chevy heads and not the LT1 heads. So they had to drill and mill and make this thing so that we could adapt it to our LT1 style L99 cylinder heads. So here's what happened when we installed the tune port manifold. Same cam, same headers and everything. And because this is going to be confusing because they all cross at 5252, I'm going to, um, we'll take a look at these individually. First, we'll take a look at the power and then we'll take a look at the torque curve. So let's start off with the power. These are the power differences between the LT1 intake manifold and the tune port L98 intake manifold in red. And you can see the L98 manifold made quite a bit more horsepower up to about 5200 RPM. And then the short runner LT1 manifold made more power on out. So in terms of peak power, we had 250 horsepower for the L98 for the TPI stuff, the long runner TPI, and 268 horsepower for the LT1. But through most of the curve, the tune port manifold obviously made more power. Uh, but if you're revving this thing out past 5,000 RPM, then the short runner LT1 looks good. Now let's take a look at the torque curve, and that will be a little bit more telling because that's really why we did this on this 4.3 liter. Let's check out. Let's check out the torque curve. The goal of this test was actually to enhance the torque production or average power production of the smaller 4.3 liter L99, you know, the baby LT1. So what we did was I figured out that I wanted to try to install the tune port manifold on here because of the long runners, they kind of enhanced torque production. I wanted to see how well they performed on the 4.3 liter. Now the thinking was that even though these were long runner manifolds for the L98 or the LB9 combinations, we know that they tend to make peak power at a low RPM. But I was hoping that with the smaller 4.3 liter displacement that they would carry the power out further on the smaller motor and basically make more average power. And we showed you what the power uh, difference was compared to the LT1 intake manifold, but let's take a look at the torque curve now. So this is our LT1, made 252 foot-pounds. You can see it was above 250 from 4100 out to 5000 RPM. And let's take a look and see what happened. We'll compare this to the tune port manifold. But as you can see, it's a big difference in torque between the long runner tune port in red, which made 293 foot-pounds of torque, compared to 252 for the LT1. You can see the LT1 made peak torque out at 4,800 RPM, and the tune port made peak torque at 4,100 RPM. So we had a difference of 700 RPM as to where they made peak torque. And it kind of shows you that runner length definitely determines what happens with the torque curve and what happens where these things want to make power. As we've always told you, intake manifolds are RPM specific. The runner length of the intake specifically will help determine where this motor or where the intake manifold wants to optimize power production. You can see obviously from here, the long runner tune port manifold was designed to enhance torque and that's exactly what it did. It wants to make torque early in the RPM range, much earlier than the LT1. It makes more torque, much more torque obviously, as much as 40 foot pounds or more, but out past 5200 RPM, the short runner intake becomes more efficient. So intake manifolds <laughs> determine where you're going to make power. But the nice thing about this is the tune port manifold actually worked very well on this 4.3 liter in terms of torque production. So especially if you had this thing, imagine if you had this little L99 in a full size Caprice, which is what they came in, you, which of these torque curves would you rather have in that big heavy Caprice? Obviously the tune port manifold is something that they should have used on that 4.3 liter because it would have been much better, especially on these bigger V on these big heavy vehicles. And a lot of guys don't shift these things past 5,500 RPM anyway. So in that RPM range where they're going to be used most often, the, the long runner tune port manifold is definitely the way to go. Here's another interesting thing I want to show you. And I did, we didn't start the RPM range of the LT1 manifold down at 2500 like we did the tune port manifold, but it probably would have made similar torque numbers down at 2500 RPM. And that's because the runner length on these manifolds <laughs> is no longer being, is really no longer a consideration in that RPM range. Basically, this is more displacement and even cam timing has very little effect at 2500 RPM. It's a lot, it has a lot more to do with displacement and compression 
and you can wiggle that around a little bit. What we would need to do to really make um, a lot more torque at 2500 RPM with either of these manifolds is make them super long, even longer than they are in tune core configuration. Like if we added another four to six inches of runner length, then we could shift this torque curve back this way and enhance torque production here, but it would take a lot of runner length to do that. So now let's take a look and see what happened when we ran our carbureted combination. Here's a comparison that's going to make all the fuel injection guys mad <laughs> because the way to enhance the power output of your fuel injected uh, LT1 style motor is to put a carburetor on it. <laughs> so this is our combination with the LT1 factory intake manifold, 268 horsepower and 252 foot-pounds of torque. Here's what happened when we put the dual plane GM carburetor, a carbureted intake on it and a 650 Holley. As you can see, not only did it make more peak power, 277, and, but it made more torque, 280 foot-pounds compared to 252 for the LT, compared to the short runner LT1 intake manifold. It basically just made more power everywhere. And as we as we see, had we run the LT1 uh, intake down here, down low, the torque numbers would have been similar down here at 2,500 RPM. But let's take a look and see how this compares to the how the carbureted intake compares to the long runner tune port intake. As you can see, the long runner tune port intake still made more torque, 293 foot pounds, and made more torque than the carbureted intake up to about 4,800 RPM. But then the carbureted intake made more power after that. So again, it's RPM specific where you want your combination to make peak power. The ideal situation would be to have all of the torque of the long runner manifold and all of the top end power of the carbureted intake, but unfortunately we cannot do that short of doing a dual runner intake manifold. And no, there isn't a camshaft that will allow us to do that, but there are cams that will allow us to make more power with each of these combinations, and that's coming up in another video. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what do we learn in our comparison between the long runner L98 tune port intake and the short runner LT1 intake? Obviously, runner length matters. It determines where the intake is going to want to optimize power production. On the tune port manifold, the long runners made much more torque down low, but the short runner LT1 made more power on the top end. So there you go. Where do you want to make your power? If I had a Caprice equipped with an L99 4.3 liter, I think I would definitely choose the long runner tune port manifold. Now GM should have offered that combination. They also should have offered the tune port manifold on trucks where everybody wants more torque. But honestly, if I had my choice between the L98 tune port and the LT1 short runner manifold, I think I would choose the third option. That's right, the carbureted induction system from GM Performance Parts. That dual plate intake with a 650 carburetor made more peak power than the short runner LT1 intake manifold. It didn't quite match the torque production of the L98 two port manifold, but it came close. It made the best average power production. So there you go. If you want to improve the power output of your fuel injected L99, add a carburetor. But don't worry, we're not done. More testing coming up on our tune port L99. We're going to add camshafts, we're going to add ported aluminum heads, and we're going to add boost from a Torque Storm supercharger. So why am I still talking to you guys? Let's get busy.